The if formula is a great little formula that's going to save you a few headaches with Excel. Let's have a look. Now, if you're working with spreadsheets, you're probably spending a lot of time looking through data and probably inputting information into cells. Now, this takes a lot of time and energy and it's a bit boring and you've probably got better things to do. Now, there's lots of cool formulae in Excel that can save us time. The IF formula is one of them. The basic idea is that IF will look at another cell and according to what's happening in that cell, it will make something happen in your cell. Okay, this sounds a little bit complicated at first. Let's have a look at how it works. I'm creating a spreadsheet to log my earnings from my part-time job. As you can see here, I'm logging the total number of hours I'm working each week and using a formula here to multiply the number of hours by my pay rate to give my total pay. What I want to do is create a spreadsheet to calculate how much income I have to pay on my earnings and how much pay I have left over after tax. That sounds straightforward enough. However, there is one condition we have to take into account. The tax man says here, tax is payable on earnings over 180 pounds. Now this is why we need an if formula because we want to treat earnings weeks where we earn more than 180 pounds. We want to treat those in a different way to weeks where we learn where we earn less than 180 pounds. And an if formula is going to, going to allow us to do this. Before we go any further, the formatting effects I've used here, I've used some text wrap, some cell borders, there's some bold. You can find out more about these in our formatting series, so do take a look at those. Okay, so in column L, I want to create a simple formula to tell me if the earnings for the week are more or less than the tax threshold, which is in cell D6, which is 180 pounds. So to do that, we're going to use an if formula. So we're going to type in equals if and open bracket. As usual, Excel is giving us prompts. So Excel is asking us um, what to do next in order to build this formula. It's asking us for a logical test. Now this is a rule or a condition that we decide in order to determine what this formula displays. And this is the essential idea behind an if formula. We can say if something is going on in a spreadsheet, which could mean if a cell is a certain value, if the sum of a range of cells is a certain value, or many other conditions. If something is happening in the spreadsheet, do this. If something is not happening in the spreadsheet, do that. That's the fundamental idea behind an if formula. And that rule or condition that we set is called a logical test. So our logical test here is if our pay for the week, which is in cell K9, is more than the tax threshold, which is in cell D6. So I'm going to click on cell D6. That's our logical test. So now we hit the comma key and we can see that the next prompt has appeared in bold. So Excel is asking for the value if true. So Excel is asking for what to do if our logical test is true. So what to do if our pay is more than the tax threshold. In this case, we just want yes to appear. Now, I have put speech marks around the yes. Um, it won't work very well if you don't put the speech marks in. So we just want text to appear. So we include the speech marks. So a yes will appear if the logical test is true. Then we hit comma again. What do we want to happen if the logical test is false? So what do we want to happen if the pay for the week is less than the tax threshold? We want to put a no in here. So once again, speech marks, no, and close speech marks. These are the elements we need for an if formula. A logical test, what to do if the logical test is true, what to do if the logical test is false, and then close the brackets. There's one more thing we need to do, and some of you have probably spotted this. Because D6 is an absolute reference, we are going to hit the F4 key. 
that means that wherever we copy this formula to, the destination cell will always refer back to D6. As you know, Excel uses relative references, so if you copy a formula down, those references will go down with the formula. This reference we want to fix on D6, so we're going to hit F4. The dollar signs appear around the reference. That means that it's fixed, and that's good for us in this situation. So this formula is complete, so I'm going to hit the Enter key. And this looks good. So yes, tax is payable because our pay for the week is above the threshold. So now all we have to do is double click here. Just double clicked in the bottom right hand, hand corner of the cell and we have done an autofill. So the formula has copied down. I can just do a quick check. 160, pounds is less than the threshold. So this should be, no, this is right. Let's try testing this. So I'm gonna change total hours to 10 here. The pay has changed and the if formula has changed too. So this seems to be working pretty well. Okay, so I would like to challenge you to see if you can populate the rest of this table using if formulae. Here we want to know the taxable income. So if the pay for the week is more than the tax threshold, what is the difference between the tax threshold and the pay for the week? This is the taxable income. Then if you multiply the taxable income by the tax rate, which is in cell D5, you will get the tax deducted. If you minus the tax deducted from the pay after tax, sorry, if you minus the tax deducted from the pay before tax, which is in column K, you will get the pay after tax. So see if you can implement two more if formulae in column M and column O and a simple multiplication formula in column N to complete this table. Okay, so that's the if formula. Good luck with it. It will save you a lot of time and it should impress your colleagues. So I hope you're able to follow that video and understand what was going on. I'll be really interested in hearing how you're getting on with the if formula or any other formulae. So if you're watching on YouTube, why don't you leave a comment? Or you can find us on Facebook or Twitter. It would be great to hear from you there. There's also links to other formulae in this series up on the screen now. So take a look at those. Keep up the good work and good luck with your spreadsheets.